and uh, let's go here. So when we see here, in fact, so if you see here, I have a table. I I have a directory called uh, this uh, test data. Oh, sorry. Let me create the directory first because I was practicing for you guys. So let's say I, I created a directory test data, right? And what I do, I put, oh, sorry. Is it better now? So what I'm doing now, I'm putting local file employee.txt from my local to SDFS, okay? So what I'm using Hadoop FS hyphen put employee.txt from my local to TMP test data in SDFS. Okay, so now what I'm doing now it's employee.txt. Let me show you the data once it get copied. So it, okay, file exist. Very strange. Okay, once again. Okay, so the employee file is already there, right? Let me show you what is inside this file. So we have only 10 employees, right? And uh, the first column is employee ID, the second column is salary, and the third column is department, okay? So now, okay. Second, guys. I'm maximizing most of the terminal which are open. Just one second, okay? Perfect. Now, so I think this is more visible to you guys. Is this no? There's no difference. Both are same. I usually prefer the short one. Get and put. You can use anything, okay? Like the question was, uh, was there any difference between put and copy from local or get from copy to local? No, there's no difference. Both are same, exactly same um, synonyms, you know. Okay, so I I I, I showed you that I have a file uh, emptor.txt in both local and in I put that file in HDFS as well using put command. And here, I what I did, I created the table here so the table is already there so what i did create table employee employee id the same structure what i wanted to give i, I showed you employee id is the first column salary int and whatever department is third column row format delimited fields are terminated comma why because my fields here are terminated by comma my lines are terminated by control m or the new line character and i created the table here what i did See, this is your internal table, right? Because I haven't used external keyword here. So if I skip the external keyword, the table is by default managed by Hive, right? And what a special thing I'm doing here, I'm giving the location here. The location here is the SDFS location, right? So let's say if I'm creating this table and uh, what I'm doing here, create table. The same thing what I told you first. If not exist, so it, it, it like the table was already there, so it didn't create it, right? But let me do one thing, right? Let me select star from employee. So what this table will do? It is showing us ten records, right? So now let me drop it. Drop table employee so now table is dropped now when i go here see what i'm showing here that although although we gave some other location other than hive default warehouse that is user hive warehouse right what is the hive default warehouse location user hive warehouse so if we don't give this location hive will store this data into user hive warehouse right so now if i go here into the sdfs 
and if i hit this again then it will say the directory does not exist because the directory is gone let it come yeah so see now because i deleted the table so that's what i'm telling you so if we have let's say this directory is not a specific to the table right i created one table on this directory pointing to this directory it may be or may not be my directory it may be somebody else directory but mistakenly i dropped the table so this directory is gone and this is the biggest drawback of uh, of internal or managed table right one more thing let me show you so i i i'll create the table again okay so although see the directory is not there right directory is not there and although the table will be created without any compilation error right if i select the uh, it will it will give us no result because data is not there now what we will do we will do this thing hadoop fs hyphen port employee.txt into this directory so now when directory is gone to that now this file when it is copied by port command to this directory and if i hit the select command now the data will be there so making sense right so now if i put the data again uh let's do one thing control c and uh, cp employee.txt i'll copy it as emp1 just to make sure that it's copied okay yeah epp1.txt whatever so what i'll do i'll copy it again to the same directory i'm just showing you one more feature epp1.txt so it will be copied and now since epp1 and employee are the same data the data will be duplicate here so let me show you see so what i'm showing here that when we are refreshing the directory see how fast the hive is the data is loaded behind the scene when i'm running the query it is going to meta store checking the directory if data has been copied successfully to the directory the data has refreshed automatically here in the table as simple as that right now let's do one more thing drop this table again okay and now let's put external here so external keyword is here now let me create it okay now if i select the table there is no data because obviously the directory has no data and now let me put this here so i'm just putting the directory the data epp1 the file of employee data into the test data so it has been copied now if i select it should give me 10 rows perfect now let me drop this table table dropped now if i go here and if i select that hadoop fs hyphen ls the same directory this directory right as this is external table what i got what i what i have taught you or what i have explained you the directory should not be deleted right i drop the table employees ideally if i am correct then the directory should exist with data so let me see perfect so data is there so even though we deleted or dropped the table the data is there so this is the biggest benefit of external tables right so the the concept is clear to you guys right what is the difference between internal and external table i proved it to you okay one more concept i proved if you if you put more more data into into uh, the directory that did uh, when you hit select star it will be automatically uh, refreshed behind the scene okay what about metadata yeah metadata is gone okay perfect good question right let's do one thing so the table is gone right so let's do one thing uh let me open one more terminal let me zoom in twice and let's go to mysql mysql hyphen u what's the root and hyphen p cloud era we are good so i'm just showing you guys that the question was asked 
what about the metadata, right? So metadata is gone in any cases. Whenever we drop the table, the metadata is gone. So show databases and use metastore. Uh, show tables. And we need to select from select star from uh, what's the table name? TBLS. So when you see here, uh, now let me minimize it for one minute. Once more. So when we see here, okay, <laughs> sorry guys. Anyways. Okay, sorry, I'm not sure whether whether you guys can see my screen or not, but the employee table is not here. So the metadata is gone. Okay. So metadata will be gone in any case, whether it's internal table or external table, but data will be intact in case of external tables. Okay. So let's go to the notes now. Okay, so what I've covered, create table, describe. Okay. So now describe formatted and describe extended. I have covered in a lot of detail. So in most of the cases in industry, you're gonna be using describe formatted, right? Describe formatted will give you a lot of details, right? Um, we can put data into multiple ways. Okay, one more uh, type I, I showed you now. And I, I think this is not mentioned anywhere. Insert, we can insert data by giving location the same example why uh, I, I told you right so when when we copy the data to the location the hive will read it automatically right so now let's cover one, one more thing okay so let's do one thing so now so we have employee and i'll show you guys employee.txt in local we have employee dot txt in sgfs right and uh, okay so now what we'll do uh let's go here quickly let's go here so the table has been dropped right so let's create the table again let's not give the directory okay let's do one thing so i remove the directory I am creating the external table. This, this is the first time I'm trying it. Okay. Will it create or not? It created. Now, now, although I didn't give the location, so let's say I created an external table called employee. I didn't give the location, right? And let me describe this table now. Describe formatted employee. Sorry. Describe formatted what the spelling of formatted f o r m and describe spelling is wrong describe sorry, right? yeah 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 one second so d c describe okay so when i when i describe it right so now see see every nothing is rocket science what i'm teaching you everywhere it's interrelated so now what we see that if we don't mention the location it will always be user high warehouse and then the employee or the table name right let's do one thing now and that's interesting so now let's do one thing uh, we are here and we have data here right so we know that this data exists Okay, so let me copy this file and this is an HDFS. Okay. So what I'm doing here, uh, load data. And since, since this is an HDFS, I'll say in path, then the directory name, directory name into table and table name is employee hit enter data loaded let's check it first <laughs> data loaded perfectly right now let's do one thing okay before we do one thing let's go here uh now let's copy this 
and select whether data has been loaded in the back end of the hive or not okay uh hadoop fs hyphen ls and then paste that path so ideally that this file app.txt should be here okay although we didn't copy to this directory because we copied to the yeah see now so what i did see i'm proving a lot, lot of things nothing very rocket science again so what i did i copied to employee table right employee table was since employee table when we created the employee table we haven't mentioned the directory so that by default the directory was warehouse so when we check the warehouse directory the epp.txt file which we copied from uh, which we copied to the employee table employee table is in warehouse directory right till here we are on same page any doubt or am i am i going too fast because this create this might create confusion because i'm i'm jumping around windows right so let's do one thing now uh let's drop this table so ideally what should happen this is external table location is user hive warehouse i'm dropping the table what i teach you that if we drop the external table okay let's for your sake the metadata is here so we have metadata here right in my sql the metadata is there okay now let's me do one thing i'll drop the table i will see the metadata again metadata gone okay and now let's see this directory again perfect and this is see i'm i'm trying this for the first time okay even though we didn't mention the location the by default the location is user high warehouse because the table is external the user hive warehouse directory which is a default directory for hive is intact the data is intact making sense right okay so now let's do one more thing because this table is important for today's class let's create it again okay so now let's prove one more thing right so we have created the table employee directory is already there directory is already there right now let's select the data so because i haven't put the data right data is already there making sense right so see i dropped the table since the table was external the directory was not deleted i created the table again i created the table again i haven't put the direct uh, data specifically still data is there okay so if you want i i can i can explain it to you here in in 2 minutes okay if it's not clear to you guys okay so now what i did there is a directory called epp.txt right i copied this directory this is this this was in local i copied it using put command to sdfs under tmp underscore test data folder right so it is this is sdfs right so then i created a table employee employee and this table is external table external means if data if we drop the table data is not gone and we haven't mentioned any directory we haven't mentioned any directory that that means we haven't mentioned location into the create clause so by default the location is user hive warehouse right so this thing is clear till now right then we what then to load the table in this employee table what we did load data local not local sorry in path because this we are loading from sdfs in path this directory name to this table right and then we drop this table since this table was external okay before that this data once we run the local data in path 
this data is copied from TMP test data to warehouse directory by using this command. This data by, by running local data in path, what local data in path commanded, it copied directory from SDFS this folder. So user high warehouse directory. Now, when we drop the table, since it was external, this directory or the employee directory was not deleted. As simple as that. Okay, see, everything is interrelated. Okay. So now, uh, so I, I was doing some practical, but I, I wanted to show it to you guys. Okay, that, okay, the things, whether it's internal, external, everything, everything uh, in theory and in practical are in sync. Nothing is going out of the sync, right? Okay, uh, Nilendra, I have a doubt. Like, uh, yeah, what, yeah, if file, what if I have a file in my like system, not on the virtual machine, and I want it to be on the VM's desktop? Is is the drive the only possibility to download like from a drive on the browser of the VM, or uh, is there any other way that I can do it? Oh, yeah, there, like, there's SCP, SCP as well. So when you go here, uh, okay. CMP, right? And I'm not sure I I run that command long. So when you run SCP, um. SCP is secured coffee, right? And then you will you will say uh, Cloudera VM, uh, the source path and destination path. I, I I'll ping you the command later. I don't remember it, but we can use SCP. And then it, it okay. will go to the uh, your uh, VM, like local okay. VM. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So I, I have covered a lot of things in how to load data, right? Um, so let's cover. And I have covered this in a lot of detail, like what is delimiter, what is column delimiter, what is row delimiter, what is collection delimiter, right? This kind of thing. Uh, okay, let's do one more thing. Okay, so one thing what I what I what I told you in theory, and I'm not sure I told you or not, but let me let me tell you now. So this is your hive. This is your SDFS. I explained in the first two classes that whenever we want to read data from SDFS or whenever we need to process data from SDFS, we need to write map reduce jobs, right? And I explained when in the theory of hive that what Facebook engineers did, they write some Java code which will which will convert your SQL queries into map reduce jobs, and then that those map reduce jobs will run on SDFS and give data back to Hive. I explained it to you, right? But the question arises, question arises that when I'm when I'm running select star from employee, there is no MapReduce job running, right? It's simple. But when I'm running select count star, it means just I'm counting rows from employee. See map to this job range. Right? Now the question what I want to ask, and which I'll answer eventually, that why in select star there is no map reduce job run? Because we are and only retrieving the data and we are not doing any processing. Like there is no combiner we use, or we are not reducing the counting or reducing the number of rows or something. It's yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Not hundred percent, but yeah, but correct, okay. Uh, I was all also going to tell you the same thing. Um, okay, so obviously whoever gives this answer is correct. That okay, we are not doing any processing. That's why the map reduce is not needed. We, when we are doing count star, we are asking uh, some process to tell me the number of rows, and that's why we are reducing or we are we are doing some processing, and that's why the map or reducing is any right. But in case of big tables, when you run map reduce job, oh sorry, when you run select star. I, I don't have the examples now, but when you run uh, select star from table name, there will still a map reduce job run because obviously it's a big table, uh, millions of rows, right? Now, what I want to show you, which property is controlling that behavior. So I have copied it from somewhere. So this thing. So I'm not sure who answered that question. We are not retrieving in, in Hive term, we are fetching the data. So when we are simply fetching the data, there will be no map reduce jobs, right? Which property is controlling that? So there is a property in um, in Hive side.xml which we can put directly. Hive fetch task conversion. 
right and we can tell it that okay uh you know how much uh data or what is the threshold over which you need to uh, read, uh run a map job because every time um when when you don't run a map it's not beneficial it may slow down the or it may not give you the proper result then we can we can buy this property this particular property we can we can uh mention that okay uh so this is again the most important thing okay one more thing right um and i didn't cover it so whenever we see whenever we are creating the table and i I'll, I'll, I'll cover this in, in uh, next few lectures so obviously you know this thing that we need to mention create table statement with some column names and their data types right we need to mention location where directory has been stored right and even we mentioned survey properties in some way not in this way but in this way row format delimited right but what is what exactly is the survey right and why see let me show you one more thing before i jump to this command how this command came right so to see any create table statement so what are we going to be doing show create table of employee so this will show me how i created the employee table okay so this is how i created the employee table right so in this case see it's very 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 simple thing so here this particular thing i'm i'm telling that okay these are few of the columns right and this survey means the rows and uh, fields are terminated by this my location of this file is this right um and the most important thing which i need to tell you why i am covering this this table properties even though you don't mention the table properties i by default adding some table properties how many files have created this table how many rows number of rows are there what is the data size what is the total data size and number of things so these table properties are added by hive for you and when we talk about data uh definition language and when when we say uh, i told you right yesterday that we are doing data definition language and data manipulation language with hive we can ma uh, modify these table properties using dml or ddl like alter command okay i'll show the examples later but i i wanted to cover okay so this is good uh let's go to hive functions yeah okay so now this is the most important topic why we are learning hive right why we are learning hive so that we can do some processing or we can do some analytics over the data right this is why we are learning hive and this is where uh, this is why we learned map reduce because there is lot of data on sdfs lot of millions of rows um we need to process the data we need to get so this is called data we need to get information out of this data because information is the only thing which is valuable so, so, to, so to get value out of data we need to process it right to process it we can do the processing using map reduce we can do we are right now doing it with hive we can further do it by spark something else like there can be a number of things right but why we are learning all this thing so that we can get value out of the data which is stored on sdfs or on some storage location right and this is why we are learning all these things now now the question arises this is good and that's why we are learning all these things so now question arises how do we need to get value out of the data let's say you have employee table right and it's a small company you have only 10 employees and you have three four departments now if i ask you how many employees are there as a manager uh, I, i i ask you how many employees are there you will say 10 employees so this 10 count is a value for the manager right but if if i ask you how many employees are in cs department you need to write something like select count start from 
employee where uh, where department is equal to cs right something like this then it, it will show you all the rows where department is cs right and so the thing is okay let it run meanwhile and now let let let's say if i ask another question what is the average salary of of each department what is the average salary of each department what are you going to be doing there are two ways to do it right what are those two ways you will count you will sum the salary of cs department you will count the number of employee in cs department and then you will divide it and it will give you average right so just to do the average you need to do two calculation and in fact three calculation first calculation second calculation and third calculation is division right so what sql people did long time back not high people what sql people did they said to do this basic calculation right you guys do not need to worry about it all these basic mathematical calculation we will give it to you as inbuilt functions right with with every language some inbuilt function comes and comes you know come come together for example average sum minimum maximum etc like whatever whatever the basic function you can think it of like these functions are called built in functions right what these functions are doing functions are almost doing the same thing to do the average they will sum it they will find the count they will divide it and give you the average like the same average functionality like the in the mathematics okay so now let me cover these built in function first and then we will jump to other other complex functions okay i know this this won't work and i know why because i put the data wrong in the wrong way anyways let it come okay so now there are so many built in functions there are so many built in function um, and i'll show you a few examples and most of you guys know by the name that what that built in function is right what round will do and i i i don't want to cover uh, in lot of detail what round will do let's say we have a uh, float number and we round it so it it will convert to if this second digit is greater than 5 then it will it will round up to 6 if it is less than 5 it will round down right and uh, i i'll share this uh, notes to you you can read it down but i want to cover few functions here okay like concat what concat will be do the concat is a concatenation for example you have you have three columns three columns name last name and uh, middle name if you want to know the full name what you can do you can say select concat name comma last name comma middle name from table and let's say uh, if you want to give an alias to it you will say as full name this way the concat is working so whenever you use any function so in any language when you want to use a function you need to use brackets for example for average you need to use brackets bracket means you are using some function right let's see if it is working uh okay yeah it it work this time right so actually when i when i when i was creating data i created data like some in some stupid way so this single quote is coming as part of data now okay anyways so there are five employees in cs department right um so let's do one thing let's say if i want to concat i'm just showing you one example you can you guys can practice it later concat department comma salary of each employee who is in cs department 
right? And in fact, concat and then salary and then department. And we can give a alias here as combine something. Let's see. Okay. See now. So what you what it did? This is my salary. This is my department. What concat function is? It combined the those two columns, right? And it gave us the result. Should both of them to be strings? Uh, yes, both of them should be strings. Okay. Okay, let's do. Okay, good question. Actually, I don't remember. One second. So what is this? Int string. No, no, it it converted that into that into a string, right? Salary was integer, right? And uh, department was a string. So when I concatenated it, it converted int into string and then concatenated it. Okay. Okay. So this is done. Um. So one more thing. Again, very very basic things, right? And these are very important things. So I'm covering them. So there are so many functions like l case or lower or upper. I'll trim. Let me do it for you. Uh, so let's go here. Let's do one thing. So let's do one thing. Put this CS just to make some use cases. CS in a small case and this ME and put some space here. Okay. And uh, put this in like this. Okay, and then what? Let's do one thing. Let's start beehive. So I'm starting B line now because so that we can see the header and all. Okay, um, and I'll I'll show you L trim, uh, R trim, and different kind of stuff. Okay, so B line is here. So let's say select star from employee so the data wait i'm not sure what going on so here's let's say select start from employee so we have data here right now let's do one thing uh load data local in path uh and from where from here pwd home cloud era employee.txt home cloud era uh, employee.txt into table employee load data local okay perfect right so the data has been inserted now right um so what i'm going to be doing now select let's say upper so right now what we can see that department and let's say department from employee so what we can see here that even though the original department is in lower case it will convert everything in uppercase, right? Uh, one more thing is, let me do one more thing. Select this, comma, length. I'm not sure, length or length. Length of department. Comma. No, it should be length. gth okay so see now what is the length of this department this one is 15 why because although this is two there are 13 spaces here right let's say if we want to remove this space what we're gonna be doing we're gonna be doing like trim 
and these are very important thing you know very very basic thing but very important trim so now when you see here c3 uh it's not working okay one second guys trim r trim one second but it's not working trim string a should return trimming space on both sides oh sorry 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 it won't work uh and i know why because this space is part of the string am i making sense so anybody can answer why why this trim is not working here because this trim is like this single quote are part of the string right this single quote are part of the string and this space is inside those, those single quotes and that's why the trim is not working the space has to go after the string yeah no not not the after the string it it should be like this it should be like this so let me do it for you when we go i so ideally it should be like this so single quote it is not taking let's do one thing quickly so let's go here load that data again okay now let's see yeah so this 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 time it worked right so no it's not working what one second guys sorry maybe i'm doing something wrong l e n g t h yeah it's not working i'm not sure maybe i'm i'm, I'm putting data in wrong way okay um but it should work ideally okay uh, so l trim and r trim are the most important thing so whenever there are spaces in a string when there are spaces in the string you need to use l trim and r trim uh, before you compare string with the other string right because space won't allow the equivalence in two strings right uh, i told you and i taught you this function yesterday now let's so these are few function i I'll, I'll share this sheet, uh, sheet to all of you but let me cover few most important things to you guys okay so in hive the built in functions are okay but there are few more other type of advanced functions right so in advanced functions there are basically three types of function the first is called user defined function right what is user defined function let's say you have hundreds of built in function right hundreds of built in function but let's say the current current example right the space is coming between single quotes and you need to remove this space the built in function trim is not working the built in function trim is not working so you need to write the own logic something like this that remove this single quotes first and then remove the spaces right so you need to define your user defined function for this case so when the built in functions are not providing you the functionality what you want you need to write your own logic into java code and i'll i'll show you how to write it okay that's called user defined function then comes user defined aggregated function so these are aggregated function aggregated function right so these are function like uh, the function which is used by group by clauses okay and these are table generation function user define tabular table generate table generation function in simple terms let me tell you now user defined function what it will do if let's say you have 10 rows in table it will work with every row and it will return 10 rows so let's say uh, the same case right uh, l trim and r trim they will work in the same way 
they will work in the same way as the built-in function works um it will it will hit each row and it will convert something do something and it return one row this is udf let's come to udaf what aggregated function will do aggregated function let's say in 10 rows you have four departments and you want to summarize or aggregate based on department so out of these 10 rows how many rows will be there four rows based on each department right now coming to udtf udtf let's say udtf will work on collections udtf will work on collections let's say if you have a data like uh, data like this let me show you here select star from collection underscore example i should I, I created this table for you guys yesterday right so you have data like this right so let me copy it and paste it there so you have data like this now you want output as something like this one java one c hash and one python in this way right so what udtf will do udtf will can generate more rows than the actual rows 10 rows can be converted to multiple rows like more than 10 rows right based on the collection so this is user defined function user defined aggregation function and user defined table table generation function right so let's start with uh user defined aggregated function that's the most important thing right so let's go here and let's do one thing so let's start from employee since i corrupted this table so let's do one thing uh yeah now let me show you one special thing right so let's do one thing let me correct the table data first and then i'll show you one more important thing so this is good let me convert it into correct format i'll convert it into again me like this i'll convert it into cs like this and rest everything was good okay so it is good now since this table is corrupted right so i need to update with the latest data so what i did load data local in path now i can use overwrite here overwrite into table okay now when i go select star it will have only my correct data got my point right okay now see how aggregation functions works right select and uh, i'm covering sql here because sql is most asked question in data engineering thing so let's say if i want to have average salary and let's say we call we give average cell comma department from employee group by department okay so what i what i want to know i want to know the average salary of each department so what i need to write i need to write something like this okay let me open one more guide for you guys see when we work with sql right when we work with sql obviously you need to start with select clause right this is the clause which you can skip then you need to select then you have from clause right these two clauses are the most important clauses in sql you cannot skip this clauses right in between you can have star when you want to select star means all the columns right select star from here come the table name table underscore name so what this statement say select all columns from table name right let's say if you want to select few columns you can give column one you can remove this even that's it column one separated by column two it will give us two columns right 
this is called selection this is called projection nobody will ask this question i'm just telling you because i know this this is called projection and now one more important thing is filtering right so when you when you want to do filtering you will have where clause select star from table name where then some filter condition let's say department is equal to cs so what this select will do it will only show you department uh, it will only show you all the rows where department is cs right so this is this is very very simple query right now if we want to do some aggregation right so what what we need to do so see now what i did i wanted to know the average salary of each department right like whatever this b department cs department me department right so what i did i write something like this select average salary comma department from employee right one most important thing is if i don't give group by clause if i don't give group by clause with aggregation then the query won't run right it will say the group by is missing okay one second guys and that's why keep in mind that whenever you want to run whenever you want to run aggregation query always give group by query which another question arises which column we need to use in group by all the columns except this one all the columns except have like the aggregated function one so let's say if i now let me show you one more thing right department and let's say if i give employee underscore id here will it work no it will tell me the same thing that okay employee id is not present here and i need to use first of all the spelling is mistake here employee underscore id and then i need to give comma employee underscore id okay so see what i'm telling you that with every aggregation you need to use the exact number of columns which are there in select clause which the column accept your aggregated function as simple as that okay and uh, so this thing so now this thing is clear right so now question arises can we do can we do filtering can we do filtering with aggregation can we do filtering with aggregation yes or no yes okay so which clause will run first where clause or aggregation first okay let me let me put in this way uh, where clause where clause will run first are you sure about it okay let's see okay so right now first question why in this i have 10 rows i have 10 rows why in this query all 10 rows come although i put the average salary here why because and this is the most common sense question you know and i'm not sure how much you guys worked with sql if you use every column in the table in the group by clause then you will get the exact same data whether or whether not you are using the uh, select uh, average uh, or the aggregated function so right now what i did here i have salary here right average salary here department here and employee employee id here so ideally what i did i am averaging each employee salary with its salary right in simple terms employee one salary is 1000 i want to see i want to know what is the average salary of employee one so it will say 1000 only and that's the only reason it is coming like this okay now let me remove this thing department and let me remove this thing from here and let's put one more thing here where 
department is equal to CS. What happened? Where? Oh, sorry. One more mistake. Where will always come before group by, right? Where department is equal to CS. Okay, so it will run, and uh, you are correct. Where clause will always run after, sorry, before uh, group by clause. So in this case, it will be CS, only one row will be there with the CS uh, uh, average salary, right? So, so this is how aggregated function work, right? So an aggregated function, you will have less number of rows from the original rows. If your table has 10 rows, you may or may not have, you cannot have more rows for sure. If your table has 10 rows, you can have maximum 10 rows. But in most of the cases, it will be less than 10 rows. Right? Because if you are if you are getting exactly 10 rows, then I think you are not doing any aggregation. You are doing the same stupidity what I did with select every salary, comma department, comma employee from employee group by department comma employee. Right? So see this thing. It almost did the same thing, right? Now if I ask you, if I ask you that I want to do the aggregation, listen to me very carefully, right? This I, I'll just only take five more minutes. If I want to do the aggregation, but I want to have the exact same rows, what is in the table? In simple term, in simple term, I want to have one more column here somewhere, right? in which i will have every salary of each department so let's say every salary of cs is this right 3700 so i want to have 3700 here i want to have 3700 here i want to have 3700 here and i want to have 3700 here i want to do the average i want to do the average and i need to put it with every department what is the average salary for ami it should come here what is the average salary of ME? It should come here. So the aggregation and appending should be done in the same function. And this is where user defined aggregated function will come in picture. Okay. So let's do one thing. Uh, I should have done it first. One second. Okay, let me change it. So I'll say average of what? I want average of salary, right? And I'll, I'll explain it in proper detail. I want average of salary. And then I want partition by department. And let's say I don't want order by. I'll explain this function in one minute. And let's say if I call average depart salary so these functions are called windowing function or analytical functions I, I'll, I'll explain it to two minutes okay if the result come obviously One more important thing I'll show you if the result come that there is no group by clause. There is no group by clause when we work with analytical functions. Okay, so let it come. This is the problem when, when we go for the live classes, right? Perfect. It worked, so I can explain it to you now. So what what query I ran? Okay, so what was the problem statement first? The problem statement was, I need to have the extra column in my table, which will show you every salary for each department in front of each employee salary. 
right so what we can see here that for b department the average salary is 6500 but this guy's salary is 1000 so it means he is greater than it's like this is what we are doing analysis right every salary for b is 6500 but this department is earning way high than the average salary average and this guy is earning way low than average salary so it means there is a disparity in salary am i making sense this is how managers take decision you know and this is where they're going to be asking you some question okay give me the average salary in front of each employee so that i can make some decisions right for cs the average salary is 3700 this guy is way overly paid this guy is low paid this guy is okay okay this guy is also okay okay right and this guy is again a low paid employee right so okay now let me explain how we achieved it right so what i did first of all there is no group by clause there is no group by clause right so what i did select in fact let me write it here so that i can explain it in a better way whenever we work with analytical queries or windowing function right and keep it in mind this is the most asked interview question uh to uh, let's say you have 100 employees in your department uh, you want to rank each employee based on their salary right so how you can do it you can do it using analytical or windowing function now the question arises why we call them windowing function because they work in window window can be created using partition by clause partition by clause okay let me let me do it now so what i did i want to calculate the average salary so what i did i say select employee id department salary comma now here how we need to write the analytical function which function we need to write average function perfect on which function on which column we need to do the average salary that's fine no rocket science still here so till now we are good okay but to convert any aggregation function in analytical or windowing function we will use over clause over okay over clause and then some space then we will say in bracket two things or one thing both are optional partition by now on which okay so you need to calculate the average salary of what every salary you need to calculate of each department right so you'll say partition by department okay now if i ask you that okay do one more thing guys order the average salary or order by salary so if i say order by salary so it means it will do the average salary and it will order the salary in some way let me do it let me quickly show it to you so till now we are good right and any doubt in uh till now in windowing function so if i say order by salary and if i hit enter so what it will do it will order the salary and then it will put every salary beyond it so let me show you quickly okay so till now we are good right there is no confusion there is no confusion right and one more important thing obviously from clause will come here table name there is no group by clause there is no group by clause there is no group by clause keep in mind with the windowing function there is no group by clause group by internally will take care inside over clause making sense okay um let it come and then i'll do one more thing meanwhile go to high functions and i'll explain it in a single go so copy it let it come so there, there are a few important um, functions analytical function let's say if i ask you now let it come okay so this is what it did uh, okay so
so what it did it did the same thing uh for b c s c now so for each department it, it okay so let me let me read it the group by function in some way right so this is the first partition partition means the first department partition what i asked the group by function to do the order by salary and the, by default the order is dsc it means it will decreasing order so uh, sorry increasing order sorry inc right so dsc we need to we need to give uh, by by default it will be increasing order right so what it did it partition b it ordered the salary and it put something i did wrong sorry guys uh no it, it won't work like this i messed it up um so every salary partition by department and no order by order by clause won't work in this case what it did actually that it got confused between partition by and order by so that's why it, it matched up the result okay and so ideally we need to do here order by employee underscore id now it will give the correct result okay meanwhile it is running let me cover two more things so analytical function clear right so there is no group by clause over clause will work with partition and order by inside the bracket uh, we can do any aggregation inside uh, as as a windowing function but the most important thing which interviewer will be asking you the rank dense rank lead lag these four are the most important thing when we talk about rank we talk about let's say let's say we have uh i'll go here again because i don't want to create the data set on that uh by pen so i'll go here somewhere okay so now let's say sorry guys let it run this time I'll, I'll copy the data and paste it there for you okay this time it worked fine so b b is good average department salary i'm not i'm not sure it's, it's not coming good i'm not sure maybe because i messed up the data but let's do one thing select staff my employee let me copy it there copy it here delete it control v so if you see here when i talk about department right when i talk about department cs i have five employees and if i ask you to rank these employees based on their salary if i ask you to rank this employee based on the salary you will be using rank function or dense rank function right so what i did let me quickly uh i functions i'll copy it in one go this is the last thing what i'm what i'm teaching you here let it run so when we want to go for rank if there is a tie and this is the important question for interview right if there is a tie on the column on which you are comparing for example let's say we have two employees we have two employees one and two their salary is thousand and thousand if we do rank and there's a third employee his salary is 900 so in this case obviously what is the rank of one and two what's the rank of one and two one and one makes sense but this employee salary gonna be three the two gonna be skipped in rank but in dense rank it won a one one and two so in rank when there is tie the consecutive row will be uh, skipped like the, the rank will be skipped if there's a tie right if in this case if there are five employees here is 900 again and here is 800 so his his salary gonna be three but here it's gonna be five here it's gonna be one two two 
and three. Sorry. Uh, let me do it like this. So here it will be one, two, and since it will be two and it will be three, right? So this is the difference between rank and dense rank. So in case of tie, the rank will skip the next rank. In case of tie, rank will skip the next rank. In case of dense rank, it won't skip it. Let's do it. See now. So let's see these parts, especially these parts, OK? So 900, first rank for rank and dense rank, both here, right? Dense and rank. Second is OK. Third is OK. What's going on? One second. Something is messed up the data. Not sure what I did. So let's run rank here. OK. Maybe I messed up something with the data. Anyways, let's, let's give two or more minutes, OK? But what I'm explaining it to you, in case of rank, there will be a skip. In case of tie, there will be there will be no skipping in case of tie in the dense rank. Okay. When we, if I ask you, if I ask you to for each employee, for each employee, create a new column with with the next row column. For example, for him, it will be thousand, right? And for him, it will be three thousand. So it will be like this. For each column, for each employee, tell me the employee salary of next employee. For one, the next employee salary is thousand. For two, the next employee salary is three thousand. For three, the next employee salary is four thousand. Something like this. Then we we will be using lead function, right? And lead function. When we use lead function, when we use lead function. We need to give which column we need to compare. So it's going to be salary and how many next employee we need to compare. We need to compare next employee or every second employee or every third employee, right? The same way lag will work. If we want to see the previous employee salary, for example, if we want to see the previous employee salary of each salary, for example, if I want to see CS first, the employee one previous, like, for this row, if you want to see the previous salary, it's going to be null because there is no previous row. For ME, it's going to be 1,000 like this. Then it's going to be 1,000 like this. It's going to be 4,000 like this. If you want to see the lag, then we can go for lag function. So lead, lag, rank, dense rank. Let's come go here. So now see, this is what I was telling you. I'm not sure what happened to that query, but this query is correct. So we have five rows, right? So what I was telling you that thousand is one, thousand is one. Then since this is a tie, there is a tie here, right? There is a tie here. The next is three. The second rank is gone because there is a tie. And then fourth and then fifth. So one more conclusion, what I need to tell you in case of rank, and this you can tell employer, uh, sorry, interviewer as well, in case of rank, the maximum rank is equal to row number always so the how many rows are in the, are in the table the maximum rank will be equal to that only in case of dense rank it's not like that because there's no skipping right let's do if you want to see i can i can run dense rank here as well so how to run dense rank it will be like dense underscore rank and this is DSC. This is the last topic, guys. And this is the most important topic. So please ask me questions. OK. So lead, lag, rank, dense rank and all the aggregated function can be used as windowing function in windowing function we need to use 
the function name and then over in over we need to give two clauses partition by and order by partition by means on which column you need to see the aggregated value for example if you want to see the average salary by department the the partition column gonna be department okay so let's see this thing for the dense rank yeah so for dense rank if you see i can only show you cs department so the 9000 is first rank 4000 is second rank right the third rank is this but in case of tie there will be four four okay so there is no skipping of rank in dense rank 